All right, all right, all right. Welcome to uh, the video tutorial on circular motion. Uh, in this video tutorial, we will be covering uh, most of what, really all that you'll need uh, for your quiz this week, but also uh, future tests. This will be a great uh, review tool. So we're going to talk about um, ARAD, which is our radial acceleration. We're going to talk about our centripetal force, which we know centripetal meaning center seeking. And then we're also going to talk about our period and how all of these relate to each other. So the equation for ARAD we know is V squared over R. So if you've got an object moving in circular motion, okay, so here's my object. Whoop, and here's the center of my circle. A crucial piece of information is my radius. Also the speed at which it is moving. In other words, my velocity. Now, the centripetal force, in other words, the force directed towards the center, is my mass times my radial acceleration. Now, the sum of my forces, it's crucial to know that this is different than, say, if I ask you to find the tension force. You wouldn't just go mass times a rad. We'll talk about how to find tension force, max speed, and so on and so forth. Now, capital T is my period. Okay? That is the time in seconds it takes for one revolution. Okay? So, quick possible problem. I say that it takes nine seconds to do... Uh, 18 revolutions. Okay? Well, period is seconds over revolutions. So what you would do is 9 seconds over 18 revolutions. Divide that out and you would get 0.5 seconds per one revolution. Now, when you're talking about period, you would just write T equals 0.5 seconds. You don't need to write the per revolution. It's understood that the period means per one revolution. So, an equation that involves the period, if we think about the time for one revolution, what's nice about circular motion is that we can use this equation, distance equals velocity times time. Well, if we solve for velocity, I'm going to get velocity equals distance over time. Now, distance, if we think about one revolution, Distance is my circumference, or 2 pi r, over the time for one revolution, which would be my period. Okay? So this equation is very useful if you are given the period, because how these problems work is you will either work from velocity to find acceleration, to find force or mass or some other unknown variable, or you will work in the opposite direction. So velocity gives me a rad because a rad we know from up top equals v squared over r. A rad can give us force or mass if that's what we're looking for. So these is, this is the chain of commands, so to say. So you could go this way and then this way, all right? So let's work an example of something like this. Let's say, let's keep our equations up there. Let's say that um, I've, got, I've got a ball and it's moving with a speed. Let's draw this out here. I've got a ball and it's moving with a speed of, let's say, 10 meters per second and it's got a mass of, uh, let's say, one kilogram. And let's say that its acceleration, a rad, is 200. Now, knowing this, I would ask you, possibly, to solve for the radius of this circle. Now, we haven't done a problem where you solve for radius. Generally, our radius is given to us. But it works the exact same way. 
what is the equation that involves radius that has the variables that we have? Well, the two equations that involve radius, there's one right there, but then there is a rep. Well, I know a rep. So for this problem, I would use, again, we're looking for radius. I would use a rad equals v squared over r. So plug in a rad, it's 200. v squared, well, 10 squared is 100 over r. Now, how you solve this is you cross multiply. So 200r equals 100, so divide both sides by 200, and I get an r of 0.5, and that would be meters. Okay? So again, start with an equation that has the variable that you want, and then work with the variables that you have. Okay? Let's do another example. Let's say, um, let's say now, Let's get into a more complex example. Let's say now I've got a ball on a string. So here's my string, and then here's my ball. And let's say my ball has a mass of uh, 10 kilograms. And the string is a length of 2 meters. Now, however long my string is, that is what my radius is, just like your lap. So my radius is uh, 2 meters. Now, let's say that I tell you the time for one revolution, in other words, the period, is 15 seconds. And let's say that I want to know what, first I want to know what the velocity of the ball is. And then from there, I want to know the acceleration. And then I want to know my centripetal force. Okay? So, which equation are we going to start with? Well, they give us period. So odds are, if they give us period, you are going to use the equation that has period, which is 2 pi r over t. Now, 2 pi r over t will give me my radius. So, once I have radius, I'm going to go through and solve for acceleration. And once I have that, I'm going to go further and solve for my force. So, I'm going to come over here and say velocity equals 2 pi r over t. So, velocity equals 2 pi times my radius, which is 2, divided by my period, which is 15 seconds. So in your calculadora, you would go 4 pi, and then divide that by 15. So you get a velocity of 0.8, let's say 0.838. So velocity equals 0 0.838 meters per second. So, now that I have velocity, it all starts falling together because a rad is just v squared, whoops, v squared over r. Well, whatever 0.838 squared is, so times 0.838, so 0.838 times 0.838 gives, whoops, 0.838 times 0.838. Golly, iPhone calculators are not very convenient. Boom. So, 0 0.702 over R, which R is 2. So, divide that out, and I get an acceleration of 0 0.351, and that would be meters per second squared. Now that I have a rat, I can solve for force because force, my centripetal force, is just my mass times my acceleration. Well, that is 10 times 3.51, so that becomes 3.51 newtons. Now, probably the most difficult question you'll have on your quiz tomorrow is a question where you're solving for tension. 
So, specifically solving for tension at, say, the bottom of the rotation, which is where the tension is the greatest. That's another possible multiple choice question. So, at this point, I have two forces acting on my ball. I've got the force due to gravity, which is directed down. And then I also have my tension force, which is directed along my string. So I'm going to draw that straight up here. And I'm going to abbreviate that F sub T for tension. Now, this is my net force. So my net force is directed up. So what that means is the sum of my forces has to equal 3.51. Well, the sum of my forces means that you just add up your forces. So I've got the force due to tension plus the force due to gravity equals 3.51. Well, I don't know what the force due to tension is, but I can calculate the force due to gravity. Figment. Mass times gravity, so my mass is 10 times 9.8 gives me uh, 98. Now, that 98 is directed down, so this is going to be minus mg equals 3.51. So my last step is to add mg to the other side, which is 3.51 plus mg. And we already said mg was 98. So add 3.51, so I get a tension force of 101.51 newtons. Okay? So, break down the sum of your forces to where you have tension minus your weight. Now, the other type of problem you can expect is a problem where you are on a circular racetrack and I tell you that you are going to start here and you are going to finish here and uh, let's say you cover this distance in a time of five seconds and the angle that this makes is 100 degrees okay and let's start off by calculating what my velocity is. Well, we know that velocity, two equations, 2 pi r over t or distance over time. Now, they didn't give us the period, but they did give us the time, and we can calculate this distance. That distance is arc length. Arc length. So, arc length is abbreviated with an S, and it is R theta, making sure that your theta is in radians. Now, how do I convert an angle to radians? Well, you take your angle, 100 degrees, and you multiply by pi over 180. That is the universal conversion of any angle. So, let's calculate what our angle is. So we're going to take 100 and we're going to multiply it by pi and then we're going to divide it by 180. and we're going to divide it by 180. So that gives me 1.74 radians. So theta is 1.74. Ah, 1.75. Well, we'll just use 1.74. Now, you're going to take that and you're going to multiply it by your radius. So, let's say that my radius for this racetrack is, oh, 100 meters. So, radius is 100. So, I take my radius, multiply it by my angle, and I get an arc length of 10, 100, 174 meters. That is my distance. So, the distance that I travel divided by my time should give me my velocity. So take 174 and divide it by 5 and you get a velocity of 34.8 meters per second. Again, 
We got that by taking 174 and dividing it by 5. Distance over time. Now, from that velocity, let's say that I want to know the, the time it takes for one complete loop. In other words, the time for one lap. Well, now I know the velocity, and I want to know the time for one lap. That is the period. So I'm going to utilize this equation. This time, though, I know velocity, and I'm going to solve for period. So plug in my values, 34.8 equals 2 pi times my radius, which is 100, over my period. Cross multiply and solve. So 34.8t equals 100 times 2. Over here, I've got 200 pi. So divide both sides by 34.8, and you will get your period. Now, the other probably most difficult problem that you will encounter on this quiz is a problem where you are dealing with static friction, and I ask you to find the max speed you can take that turn. So let's deal with this same racetrack, and let's say that my coefficient of static friction, let's say it's a dry road, so my coefficient is 1. Well, what I need to do is calculate what my max static frictional force would be. From force, I can get acceleration, and from acceleration, I can get velocity. So, dealing with this, I'm going to calculate a new velocity from my max static frictional force. So, separate this. This is a separate problem. Oops, pi got excluded. So, if my static frictional, my coefficient is 1, we're going to use Fusasvin. Now, how am I going to get my normal force? Well, if I'm on a flat road, I know that my normal force is going to be equal but opposite to my weight. So this becomes mass times gravity. Well, I didn't tell you the mass of this car, so let's say the mass is, oh, a thousand kilos. Well, then it makes my calculation of normal force very easy. It's just 1,000 times 9.8, which gives me 9,800. So my normal force times 9,800, or excuse me, my coefficient times 9,800, gives me my static friction. Well, my coefficient is just 1, so that means my max static friction is 9,800 newtons. Now that I know force, I'm going to utilize FMA. and I'm going to calculate a rat. Now, since this is the only force directed into the center, that means that the sum of my forces is just 9,800. That equals my mass times a rat. Well, mass is 1,000, so divide this by 1,000, and I end up with an a rat of 9.8. From that a rat, I can calculate velocity. So I would plug in my radius, which is 100, plug in my a rad, which is 9.8, and I solve for v squared. Okay, so that right there is probably the one of the most difficult problems that you will encounter, but if you follow these steps, you will be A-OK. -okay. So study your worksheet, watch this video a couple times, and good luck.